Hey everyone, High School Dropout Advice here today. We are talking about Workhorse. If you don't know what Workhorse is all about, it's a company that manufactures electric delivery trucks, vans and drones. You can see that they made some tremendous gains from nearly two bucks to now over 40 bucks per share in the past year up to now. And the company is valued at the close to five billions and has been around since 1998. We will talk about what this company is all about, who the company's leaders are, talk about some new sales and business partners, and then touch on some of the financials and fundamentals. I want you to stay until the end of the video because I have have a very very important message which I want you to know about but first let's get started so workers is manufacturing EV in truck size and vans as you can see right here these are the specs interestingly the range is only 100 miles you might think this isn't a lot of range and let me show you you are right According to many sources, on the internet, a delivery driver makes around 110 miles per tour. Even in urban cities, a tour is close to 100 miles. And if the warehouse is a little further, the range won't be enough. But Workhorse has come up with a rather unusual solution. Let me show you a picture here. So the Workhorse drone can carry an up to five pounds package and it uses the truck as a jumping point so the drone is kind of a helper for the truck driver so the drone can do the last couple of yards or miles by itself the driver can drive to the next stop and drop off a package there and the drone will meet the driver at another location doesn't sound so bad right here's another source on the website this is what ups had to say about it suppose the drones can save one mile per driver per day will result in a saving of 50 million dollars per year 50 million is a lot of money but i think 50 million is not a lot of money for ups what do i want to say here ups has 66,000 vehicles on the road so if we buy 66,000 drones let us say for 200 bucks each then we are at 13.2 million then we need many and staff technicians and so on in the end i'm worried that this is not enough to get ups or any other delivery company excited let me add a few more information when i was doing my research on their website let me show you this i think it's interesting to mention so first they say that their trucks and vans are 100 percent electric and they use 235 kilowatt hours battery and it seems like they have an upgrade for a 70 kilowatt hour battery too i'm not an engineer but a tesla 3 uses a 54 to 75 kilowatt hours battery and it weighs about 3600 to 4200 pounds and the workhorse van will weigh like 12500 pounds when loaded so it will be interesting to see if the limited range is still the same when the car is fully loaded and if the battery is the right size for those long tours. And here they mentioned the low floor design. But this is not really worth mentioning. When you have free spots on your website, then you don't really want to advertise this. I would not say something which is so small. Then we have the mentioning of the app on the right. So it can track the truck where it is. I guess it's something similar to the food deliveries have today. They proudly mentioned that Workhorse was developing this, but there are so many tracking software on the market. I I personally would not have used funds to build it and outsource this to other companies and focus my developing team on other more important things but this is just me when you read a little further there's something that catches my eye it's first describing how great this app is and helps you to optimize route planning and monitor maintenance and fuel costs throughout the life of your vehicle fuel costs I thought it's an electric vehicle I'm a little bit confused now but maybe this is just a mistake on the content writer and no one catches this mistake and perhaps you think wow high school dropouts advice is reading every single word yep i do all for you guys
Anyways, I continued my research so I can tell you if this company is worth your investment or not. But please subscribe to my channel so I know you like my content so you get updated about all the news about stocks. And if you don't have a brokerage account to buy stocks, I can recommend you Webull. You can get two stocks for free. You can use my link down below. Uh, they give you like a stock from 7 to 1600 and it's all for free when you put 100 bucks in there. But now let us talk about the leaders in Workhorse. Workhorse has around 100 employees. It's not a very large company, but it's also not a very small one. So let us have a look at the CEO, Mr. Dion Hughes. I guess it's how it pronounced. So he worked nine years at Gannett Media Technologies. Then he spent another year at Gannett Co Print and Digital Advertising. Then it looks like 11 years as a Chief Operating Officer at Corning and GV Rockwell Publishing Inc. before he moves to Workhorse. Honestly, I thought I misclicked and landed on another profile, but I double checked and it was the right profile. So I check out those publishing companies and want to make sure that I got all the info right. So the company where he was employed was about publishing, media, newspaper and tabloid. So this is where I start to wonder that the CEO has maybe no experience or like little experience in the car making industry. And it surprises me that he didn't catch the mistake with the fuel cost on his website because he's coming from the media industry. Anyways, I dug deeper for you. Maybe his staff has more experience than he does. So check out the next most important person in the line. Mr. Rob Willishan. PhD, the Chief Operating Officer of Workhorse. His work history is not something I can connect with his current position. Reading his job description of being the Director of Research and Development, Design Analysis of Chases, Crash Structure, Brake System, HVAC and Steering, Driver Interface is, to be honest, a little bit underwhelming. Then he moves over to Cisco for nine months. This just raises small question marks in my head. Then I turned my focus to the next person called Harry Demur. Demo? Maybe Harry Demo? I'm sorry if I pronounce it wrong again. But yeah, he is a board member of the workhorse. He has worked in finance and investment related businesses. He is the CEO of Australis Capital Inc. and the CEO and co-founder of Proper. And let me show you what companies those two are related to. I'm not sure if I can read it out loud and tell you, but I just mark it and let you read it by yourself. At this point, you should make your own opinions about the leaders. I don't want to say something wrong and get sued because I'm not a financial advisor and you should do with your money as you like. And maybe I'm just too skeptical, but let us move forward because the stock got a piece of good news. So, Workhorse sold 500 C1000 trucks. Wow, this is not a significant partnership with UPS, USPS or Amazon, but 500 vehicles are not bad. So let us see who they have sold it to. They sold it to Richard Auto. I checked the website and honestly, it looks like a car dealership to me, as you can see here. So I had a little different idea about this deal and I dug deeper and read the small details. So Workhorse sold 500 vehicles to Pritchard companies with an inventory finance program. So let me show you a definition of what what an inventory finance program is. Inventory finance is a revolving line of credit or a short-term loan that companies acquire to purchase products for sale later. So in other words, Pritchard is getting a loan to get 500 vehicles to put on the showroom or the internet and sell it. This is how I would understand it and this is the image I have in my head when I combine it with the Pritchard's car dealership website. 
and the word how they define inventory financing. So this sounds all in all like something which you would do in retail. It's not that Richards Auto will use these cars. So this news was responsible for a spike in their stock price. So maybe people are more optimistic than me, but this is not exciting news for me. Anyways, 500 sales are 500 sales. So let's check out their sales numbers, dive into the fundamentals. According to Bloomberg, in mid June 2020, Workhorse announced 400 vehicle sales, which is worth 1 billion. This headline makes me scratch my head, and not because it's itching. So, 1 billion divided by 400 vehicles is 2.5 million per car. This is five times more than a Lambo. Maybe they should buy Lambos instead. Anyways, maybe this is a typo and they meant 4,000 vehicles. If it's 4,000, then it's still 250,000 per vehicle. This would be a very, very expensive delivery truck. Okay, I should not be mean. This must be a typo or someone got the numbers wrong. So let's check the financial release. Q3 2020. So a couple of months after they make this statement with the 400 vehicles in this source, they admit that they could not deliver 300 to 400 cars, which they wanted to produce mainly in the last quarter. Okay, this was the financial press release of Q3 and he pushed those deliveries to Q4. The reason for the company's low numbers is the inability of our primary battery supplier to meet our volumes due to capacity issues and COVID-related slowdowns. Okay, we are all understanding COVID has hit all of us. So I was curious, how many vehicles are they selling? So because they won't mention any numbers, I just checked the sales which they have to report. In the first quarter of 2020, it was 84,000. In the second, it was 92,000. And in the third quarter, 565,000. So how many vans and trucks are those? From a source online which says a car or van costs around 52,000, this means about 14 vehicles. But I can imagine that there were maintenance, drone sales, and another kind of sales. So you can say it's around 10 vehicles sold plus or minus. Remember, they said they want to deliver 400 cars or vehicles. You should be excited to see the earnings release in mid-March. Then they will reveal if they get close to that number or not in Q4. But one thing I can tell you for sure, they blame it on the battery manufacturing company. But if the battery factory company only gives you 10 batteries for the first three quarters, then there is something wrong. We are talking about common 35 kilowatt hours and 70 kilowatt hours batteries. These are not high-end batteries anymore. Let me show you this. Research and development expenses were at 1.6 million compared to 1.6 million reported in the third quarter of 2019. When I read that, I thought, OMG. An EV tech stock company only spent 1.6 million US dollar in a quarter for research and this is the same amount than last year? This makes me scratch my head again and not because I feel itchy. This raises a lot of flags here. So I dig deeper for you guys and found this because I'm worried at this point. So I found this article at Seeking Alpha. And Mr. Edward Schneider put it in this way. Weak intellectual property. Workhorse only has eight patents. I don't know how it's like pronounced. In German, it's called patents, but I don't know. Maybe patents. So patents. The five old patents from 2005 covering Chase's assembly and vehicle headers have limited value and will expire in 20. 22. The drone patent is not worth much. The only line of sight. FAA regulatory approval is far off and the company's drone making ability to leverage this patent is questionable. So this is what he said. Workhorse stock has a lot of fans out there, but let me read this from their Q3 report. 
Interest expenses net increased to 74.3 million compared to an interest expense net of 5.9 million in the same quarter last year. When I read that, I thought you must have taken on a lot of debts to pay like 11 to 12 times more just in interest. Then I read this net loss was 84 1 million compared with a net loss of 11.5 million in the third quarter of 2019. It raises the question, where do you put all the money when not in research and manufacturing. Why do you take so much debt that you have to pay 74.3 million in interest alone? I'm so sorry for all those workhorse fans and investors out there. I don't want to say anything wrong in this video because I don't want to get sued. And let me mention again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a random guy on YouTube. So take what I say as entertainment value only. Your money is your responsibility. So I cannot tell you what you should do with your money and maybe I click on some wrong links. But if the things I have read are right, then I would never put my own money into this stock. And if I did, I would sell it by now. So please do your due diligence. All I can do is wish you good luck. Thank you so much. Please subscribe to my video if you think it was helpful for you. And if you are fanboys of Workhorse and did not subscribe, then I wish you good luck. Thank you so much. See you hopefully in the next video. Thank you. Bye. The drones can save one mile per try uh, again. The inability. Then I would never.